Hello Stitchers! Today we're going to be going over something that I covered a couple of weeks ago, but there were some problems with the video, so I'm going to go ahead and reshoot it today. But we're going to look at how to take a hand-stitched patch on any size, any count of Ada, and turn it into something that can actually be sewn or ironed onto whatever you want to put your patch on. And this doesn't have to be a square design. You can do it with any kind of angular design as long as it's mostly straight lines. And the reason for that is because there's quite a lot of folding involved with the Ada. So the straighter the lines, the better. Right angles are easiest, but you can do this with pretty much any design you want as long as you have patience. So the first thing that we have to do is our Little Creeper is on quite a bit of fabric that he doesn't need to actually be on. So what I like to do is cut around the design about five stitches out from the entire design. So we're going to go ahead and do that right now and I'm just going to use the needle to count. So this is one, two, three, four, five. So that's where we're going to start cutting. And I like these little scissors. You can use whatever scissors you like. But I like I do like my stork scissors. And let's actually find the hole. There it is. And the nice thing about the Ada is that you can just follow the holes in the fabric and get a pretty decently straight cut as you go. And there's this side right here. Okay. And now, let's see if that'll actually stay. There it goes. So now we have our patch actually cut out. And let's see if my camera can actually stay focused. But this gives us a size that's a little bit easier to work with and isn't going to cause us too many problems. So now the thing that you want to do is you want to fold around the edge of your patch, just kind of along those holes. And I like to do it opposite sides. Like this, and then do the side, the other sides together. And you do want to make sure that you have a solid border of stitching around your entire patch, just because it will make it look a little bit more even and uniform. If you want to use variegated floss, that could look quite cool. It could also look a little bit messy. It'll just kind of depend on what you're going for, really. So once you've got the fabric folded on both sides, you're going to notice that the corners kind of don't really want to behave. They look a little silly. So what I find is best to do there is to just take that and fold that in again so that you have these kind of triangular folds on the corners and you want to do that for all four. And there we go, it's about as good as it's going to get right here. Now if you're using the black Ada that you can find, a lot of stores online will sell it and sometimes you can find it in Michaels and Joann's and similar if you iron your patch like this and make sure that you get everything pressed down. That black Ada is more of a synthetic, it doesn't actually have any cotton content in it or if it does it's very low. So that'll make it a little bit easier for your stuff to stay down and stay together, but I like to use the white stuff that's made out of cotton. It's just a little bit easier on my floss, and it's easier for you guys to see. So now what we want to do is we want to take the same color floss that is on our outline, in this case it's black, and we want two strands of it. Okay, we're going to fold it over so that we have now four strands that we're working with, and then take those four loose ends and just thread them all through your needle all at the same time, just like that. And pull that through about half the length of the thread. And then you're going to have a loop on the other side over here. And this loop is what's going to make it a little bit easier to actually start doing our edging. And let's find the patch from wherever it went. Ah, oh, there it goes. So now here's our patch. And I like to start right in the middle, but you can start wherever you want. And you want to take your needle and put it right through the stitch in the front. 
and on the back you have the holes back here you want to skip the first one and bring the needle through the second hole just like that pull the floss through put the needle through the loop just like this and there we go and that is our very first stitch on the edging and what you can do to secure that is just kind of go in the back through one of the holes here see if I can get the needle through and that will just putting the needle through the fabric just like that will keep that loop a little bit more steady getting caught on my clipboard okay so that's going to keep it from coming and doing anything that we don't want it to do now we're going to go in this is the stitch that we went in through we're going to go in through the very next one right here and do the same skip the first hole and come through the second and make sure that it's not going to tie itself up and just pull it through just like this and now you're going to go through that same hole so in through the front out through the back through the same hole and you'll probably be wanting to use or wanting to be using a tapestry needle I'm using a size 24 but any kind of decent sized tapestry needle is preferable because of the amount of fabric you'll be going through you may snap the needle and once you've gone through that second stitch twice you're going to move over to the next one and it's just the same thing in through the front out through the back skipping the first hole and going through the second one with the needle just like that and you'll go through each stitch like that twice and that's just going to give you a really solid base of color around your entire patch and once you get to the corner this is where you're really going to be glad you're using a heavier needle because we're going to go in through that corner stitch just right there and come out through the back and if you can get through a hole that'll make it a little bit easier but you still might have some time bringing everything through or some trouble go through it twice on one side so just like that and then you're going to give it a nice little turn and do it two more don't do that with the thread on that side of the corner so just like that and you can kind of use your needle to convince some of it to cover up a little bit more of the corner or you can give it another stitch and try to convince that to cover the corner there we go And corners are always going to be kind of the trickiest bit though but that's okay because it's handmade and handmade things kind of have charm when they're not exactly perfect and then once you've finished with the corner you just go over to the next stitch and it might be a little bit easier if you don't go all the way through all those folded stuff and find the right hole to get through which looks like that one maybe yep and just continue on as normal so there's the first one if we can get through there for the second one it wants to there it goes there we go and we're just going to continue around the entire patch just like that. Okay, now we're at the very end. We've just got a few more stitches to go. So we're going to go ahead and do those. So there's the one. There's two. Come on. And you get. And then we finish by going through 
the very first stitch that we started on. And we're going to try to get that to go through where it belongs. So just like that. Looks like it can tangle up in yourself. And just like that, we've got our edge. So we just take our needle and all I do is I bury it in a little bit of the floss that's all over the back. And I pull the needle through. There we go. And we can tidy up some of these little threads that kind of want to pop forward and make a mess for us. Okay, there we go. And there we go. There's our little patch. And he might stick up a little bit. This is a kind of a small one, so the corners are going to make him or be a little bit thicker than they actually or make it seem like they're thicker than they actually are. This is only a square inch. You can make them pretty much any size you want. And at this point, it can be sewn or glued onto any fabric. If you have some of the uh, glue back paper that you use to create an iron on patch, you can use that. Or just stitch it right onto whatever you want to stitch it onto. That's what I usually do. But hopefully, this tutorial helped you out. Hopefully this sounds a lot better than it did last time and the video behaves a little bit better. But I suppose I won't know until I go over the video, but hopefully it does. We'll see. As always, if you have any questions, please put them down in the comment box below and I will get to them as soon as I see them. But until then, I will see you next time. Bye!